So many of us share the same passion for boats and boating. The thrill of fast boats, the beauty and elegance of antique and classic wooden boats, utility boats for work, and tow boats for play. There's so many different kinds out there, it begs the question, how many should one person have? How many does one person need? Two, three maybe? Well, today we're in an undisclosed location to meet a man who some could say has a problem. I'd like to see it as more of a passion. This guy's been collecting boats his entire life, and today we're lucky enough that he's invited us into his boathouse to take a look at his amazing collection up close. CB! Wow. What's up? How you doing? Good, how are you? Excellent, fantastic August weather. You couldn't look much better than you do right now, CB. <laughs> Holy smokes, this is gorgeous. Thank you. Great to see you. Good to see you too. What do we, what do you got here for us? This is a 1954 Gravette Streamliner, also known as a cigar boat because of its bulbous uh, woodwork. You so. can see that, and it is smoking beautiful too. Permission to come aboard? Permission granted. All right. Wow, what a beauty. What can you tell us about this boat? The engine itself in this boat is a, uh, a Buchanan V8. They partnered well with uh, with Gravette in, in those days. And they call this the Rolls Royce dashboard, and the gauges we've had restored as well. Okay. So, do you remember the first boat you ever got, and how old you were? The first boat I ever had was a uh, 1954 Gravette, and it was called the Peanut One. In fact, so it had a four-cylinder Buchanan, and I was uh, 10 years old, and my brother was nine, and we would use that to go to sailing school and back. How many boats do you have? Gosh, my, I think my daughters have counted 39 in total, so I'm below 40 anyway. Below 40. Once you get to 40 is when you really have a problem, I think. When you're born on an island, everything you do is related to boating because that's the only way to get on and off the shore. And, and many of the boats are our family boats that we all share. There's 13 of us. Okay. So everywhere you go, though, all my kids and my two brothers and their families, everyone goes in a different direction. So everybody has to have their own boat. Right, everybody's different direction in a different boat. Yeah, exactly. I can see from right here how you could catch this bug and how it could uh, <laughs> kind of seep into you. Yeah, I, I call it being infected with the Bodian virus. There you go, and you got it pretty bad, it sounds like. <laughs> All right, well, why don't we check out the rest of the fleet? Sure. Kind of like driving a piano. This is... A sight to behold. To actually see this boathouse is pretty remarkable. It's pretty neat. We have some fun in here. Spent a lot of quality time here. I collect some old engines as well as paddles and some very unique things uh, that are all related to boating and, and being on the water. Let's take a closer look at a few of these. Well, why don't we just start with the oldest one first and we'll go from there. Perfect. So this is the grandmama in here, eh? This is the oldest one at, uh, at the moment. But this is a 1938 Chris Craft. It's 17 foot six long. It's called a barrel stern because it's rounded this way, this way, and then that way, like a, like a barrel. We call it the peanut because of the shape and also because of the color. It's got a straight six engine in it, develops 135 horsepower, and has triple zenith downdraft carbs. So you can imagine in 1938, this would, would have been a speedboat. Oh yeah. So what we have here is a 1956 Gravette Disappearing Propeller Boat. It also goes by the nickname Dispro, or the other nickname is called a Dippy. So what's great about the Dippy is, in fact, the propeller does disappear up inside the boat. So what happens is the drive shaft is on a universal joint, and below the propeller shaft, there's a, um, a skeg. And so what happens is if you hit a rock, the mechanism will, will lift up inside the bell housing in the boat, and you glide over the rock. So it's, uh, it's really neat. The rudder steering is another unique feature yep. of it, that you move the handle back and forth to steer it. And perhaps one of the other most fundamental parts of it is that you don't need a battery to start it. It's crank start. So you grab the handle like this, engage it, and then just turn it around and around and around like that, and off it will go. And it'll fire up. Yeah, it's a beautiful boat. And if it breaks down, you can always row it. <laughs> So that does it for the Wood Boats and CB's collection. Coming up later in the episode, we're gonna take a look at some of his fiberglass boats, and maybe I can even talk him into letting me take a spin behind the wheel. Our friend CB Ross has been collecting boats his entire life. 
He's amassed a total of 39 boats in his collection. We had a look at some of his wooden collection earlier, and now we're gonna take a look at some of his classic fiberglass boats. So the boat we're sitting in now is a 1977 Glastron Carlson CVX 16. It's got a really neat history to it because I was with the owner when uh, he purchased the boat brand new. The boat ended up getting stored from 1978 until I got it three years ago. So it was stored for 34 years. I've had to redo the floor because it actually got some dry rot. But other than that, the boat is totally original. This is in pristine condition. And this is one that I was pretty excited to check out because when I think of the 70s Glastron, I think of Live and Let Die with James Bond outrunning that sheriff down in the bayou. We sort of have a spoof on, on James Bond with the Austin Powers and the, and the Mini Me. So we keep, we keep him on board as our, as our navigator. And you had a name for this one, you said? This one we call the gold member in Austin Powers' um, honor as well. Can we take so it for a spin? We sure can. All right. And you get to drive. <laughs> Woo! Where do we go next? What are we looking at from here? The boat we have here is a 1973 Century Coronado. It's 23 feet long. One of the biggest features of the boat is it's a hard top. A hard top. And uh, it's got a 454 and an original engine. 330 horsepower, Chrysler Marine. As you can see, some of the neat features are the, the moonroof. Convertible. Amazing. It's got this little teeny two position vent. So just to let enough air in. And then of course, the side windows are sliders. So you don't need to zip or unzip. So it feels like the old family station wagon or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's a good way of putting it. It's got the original eight track player in it. So I'm searching for a bunch of eight tracks. So if you know of any, let me know. It's got a shifter very similar to a car, neutral and then reverse. And it's got a hydrostatic transmission. So no clunking in the gear. Light for neutral, which is great. You always know where you're in neutral. But then to speed it up, you can just go counterclockwise to go faster. And to crank it down, you just turn it the other way. That's incredible. That's a lot of fun to cruise. Very similar to a wooden boat. Operates very similar way. Sound is the same. The smell is the same, too. Very similar, yep. but you've got to have a try. you got to drive it. I thought you'd never ask. So we'll put it in the neutral first. It's not really going to beat anybody off the line, I don't think. It's not about speed. No, it's a lot of fun, isn't it? Yeah, this is cool. This is really a unique experience to drive this thing. Every boat has their own feel. Yeah. That's part of the magic. Exactly. That's why you need 39 of them, right? <laughs> so another really neat feature of this boat is the period appropriate <laughs> hidden <laughs> beverage center. Look at that. I think you're a custodian of boats like this. And it's important to try to maintain some of this history. For sure. The boat that we're in now is a 1993 North Castle, and uh, Goddard Yachts now manufactures the same boat today, brand new. This boat belonged to a uh, family on the lake, and it was primarily bought to cruise the gentleman's uh, wife in the boat. And when she passed away, he couldn't bring himself to be able to use it enough and decided that it was time after, I think, 10 or 12 years of it sitting in dry dock. So I was able to get it out and clean the tank of gas with the old diesel fuel out. This is my first diesel boat. It's a two-cylinder Westerbeek diesel. I run all summer on one five-gallon jerry okay. can of diesel fuel. Yep. I could sit 16 people in the boat, and we can cruise for hours and hours. So it's similar to having a, a wooden boat, but it's fiberglass, easier to maintain. Better on still, gas. Still has that classy uh, feeling. It's a great conversation boat. Of course. I'm interested in what your family thinks of this obsession of yours. It's a, a, a sensitive topic sometimes. <laughs> I bet. But uh, I let them freely use the boats and their families and kids as well. And, and we all have a good time uh, cruising and, and on the lakes. And it's a, our spiritual home. So right. boating is an integral part of our lifestyle up here, for sure. The water could be the glue that bonds us. That's a good way uh, to say it. With this huge collection, it's each one kind of has its own purpose for you. 
And each one seems to have its own connection, whether it's to your family or to the area or whatever it is. It's, it's really incredible that all of them sort of have their unique story like that. So that's what I look for, is something that's very unique. And it's the perfect one to take us home. I think you maybe do have a problem, CB, but uh, I'm pretty happy to enable you out here. And I'm happy that we got to see everything. It's a problem, but it's also a passion. Yeah. It's a fine line you're walking, but I think you're on the right side of it. <laughs>